Hi, Dan Johnson here at uh, Sebring 2010 and talking to Danny Desosh. And I've got that pronunciation right because I just asked. I think Oshkosh Desosh kind of works for me anyway. But Danny Desosh is the owner of uh, CGS Aviation now and is making the Hawk. And the Hawk comes in a variety of sizes. Tell us a little bit about how you're doing production, Danny. Well, we've moved uh, to a new facility in Alabama, just west of Mobile, in a little town called Grand Bay. Right off Interstate 10, moved from Ohio. Uh, got a new 50 by 100 building. Uh, got in in November. And we're actually in production now. I actually delivered a kit the day before we, we came here. Uh, All right. We've got, not changing anything on the design, but we're offering a, the two-seater and the SLSA version, ELSA version. Uh, we've got a single-seat arrow, single-seat classic, and we're actually got two uh, ultralight part 103 aircraft sitting in the factory right now that we're looking at putting engines on. We'll actually be flying uh, next week. I hope to be at Sun and Fun with two or three different SLSA versions, uh, different engine configurations, everything from the Rotax 912 80 horsepower to the Jabiru 582 Rotax, and we're looking hard at the HKS uh, four strokes also. So. Well, you can't add many more things onto that. You talked about single seaters, two seaters, 103, SLSA, ELSA, I, I know experimental amateur built as well. Absolutely. And that was uh, four or five engines there. I'm starting to get lost already, and I think I know a thing or two about this. But that's great stuff, though. That's choices for customers. That's got to be good. Do I understand you delivered an SLSA recently? We actually we have one SLSA that has been built and finished. Uh, we're working on the second SLSA, which has the Jabiru engine on it. Okay. We delivered a uh, two-seat. It will be an ELSA kit, which is, you know, under ASDM, it has to be similar, exactly like the uh, yes, SLSA. But the uh, gentleman in Milton, Florida, bought it, and uh, he's planning on putting the HKS engine, the 700E, 60 horsepower on it at this time. Uh, he's, you know, a lot of people are really interested in the four strokes versus the two strokes. Sure, that's a great combination. I know we were over and looked at the HKS engine earlier on another airplane, and I've flown with that engine on a number of air, light aircraft. And if the aircraft is light enough, which I know this one to be, it works really well. Uh, it certainly is uh, with a single person in it, but I think it do the job quite well with two people in it, will it not? It will. We've had a couple of owners in here yesterday who've got 600 plus hours on that 700E. And, you know, what they're saying is really promising. They're talking about changing the oil and the plugs and the oil filter and other than that, not having to really do any maintenance on it. And, uh, you know, when you've got that many hours on on a four-stroke engine, it, it speaks for itself. So yeah, sure it we're, does. We're so. really excited about the four-stroke. And, of course, uh, we've got a lot of international interest with the, the dollar being devalued, et cetera, et cetera. And everybody overseas is really interested in the Rotax. The 912 is really what Sure, because they already fighting. know that engine. Right, and Rotax just went from 1,500 to 2,000 TBO. That's right. On their, a nice on big their change TBO. for Rotax. So. And, um, you know, I, I, I can't, I have to speak highly of road tax. Uh, Bombardier is a big company, uh, you know, strong, you know, support. So That's we're great. really, you know, we're, we're working on putting the 912 on our SLSA and hopefully we'll have that model sitting uh, at the SLSA mall in Sun and Fun and definitely at Oshkosh. And hopefully we'll actually have one that we can start flying people around it. Show them what that 80 horsepower Rotax would do to. Yeah, so you're using the Jabiru 2280 horse on it then? Correct. Or 81 horse? That Correct. was the right number. That's cool. That'll be a great engine on this. This is one of my favorite old airplanes. And I say old because it's been around for a long time. I got to fly number 33 way back when. And uh, that was fun. But over the years, this has changed quite a bit. It's gotten a little wider. It's gotten a little curvier. And like the, all the little improvements have just made what was always a nice little airplane into an even better one. Well, the you know, she's been around 28 years. Uh, the guy from Milton went on the uh, NTSB accident report, you know, and, and looked at the lack of accidents and we never had a structural failure with a Hawk. And the only real change, there's only a couple of changes we've made from the old model to the SLSA. The, the front area is a little bit wider, gives you a little more, more room, but... Uh, We've got, uh, instead of aluminum on the, the, the bulkhead, uh, we've gone to chrome molly for the oh, added, added okay. strength. We're actually looking now at taking the tail boom, 
and anodizing the entire tail boom. So you might not even have to paint it. Uh, we've never had any issues, you know, with rust. Some people have, but uh, you know, we're looking for the little things that we can do. You can't really improve on the design. No, you it's, got it. it's proven, but the little thing, any little thing we can do to improve it, we're working on it. So. Well, we're so glad you took over from Chuck's Lazarczyk, one of our, another tough name that I can actually yep. say, and I can spell it too, so that's a good thing. But Chuck is one of our old iconic guys. I mean, if you're in light aviation, you know Chuck Slazarczyk or Chuck, Chuck the Polak, or sometimes he says because people struggle with his last name. But uh, he's one of our great guys. But uh, Chuck took a little hit on the health issues. He told me he's doing a lot better. He's out hunting right now. So that's great to hear about Chuck. But we're really pleased, Danny Desoch, that you got into this and Desoch, excuse Desoch. me, and got the uh, got the airplane back into running again. And we wish you all the best with it as you continue forward. Well, thank you very much. And uh, to all the Hawk people out there, I assure you the Hawk's going to be around until I die, and my kids plan on, on taking over after that. Uh, financially, we're sound now. There's no issues there, so we, uh, we plan on being here for a long time to come, and we're going to do everything possible to take this company to that next level. And, and, uh, and if we want to get more information, drop it and see it. Where are we going? We come to Grand Bay, Alabama. Uh, we're Actually, if you're driving on Interstate 10, headed toward Louisiana, just west of Mobile, about 12 miles, you can't miss the plant because we're right on the interstate. Uh, the building, we, we haven't done it yet, but it'll be painted with the CGS airplanes and cool. be a big billboard sitting on the side of the interstate. Uh, uh, if you fly in, you can fly into St. Elmo Airport, which is 2R5 on your sectional chart. Uh, we're one mile west of St. Elmo. We'll be glad to ride over and pick anybody up. We actually have a thousand foot strip on my property that adjoins the uh, factory right now and we're working on extending that to 2,500 foot of grass strip and you'll be able to land and taxi your plane right up to the back of the shop, come in and see us. Anybody wants to take a demo ride, we'll be able to load you up, put you out and fly you right off the property. Uh, Sounds great. And, uh, yeah, we're coming to the website now. That's all the detail about exactly where to go, and that's cool, too. Uh, the website is CGS Aviation. It stood for the old Chuck's Glider Supplies, but just remember CGSAviation.com. You can find a lot of stuff about the uh, website there. And i got to add to your comment earlier, it's over 1,500 of these guys flying. So that's a lot of success for a neat little airplane, which also has one of the lowest price points in all of SLSA. Right, you can... Buy a 912 Rotax, which is what the big boys have, yeah. for probably half the price of what you're going to pay for some of the. What is that number in uh, 2010? We understand the numbers will change as people view this video later, but what would be the number on a 912 powered Hawk today? In we're, SLSA we're looking, form? depending on how you rig it, somewhere 55. Pretty good 50, price. Right Pretty good price for a fun little airplane. And, and then, even lower if you want to go with a two stroke engine. A 582, you're looking right around 40 to 42 pretty good number these days considering some of these guys have gotten way past a hundred thousand dollars and uh, so here's a way you can still fly inexpensively and you have so, any flight reports on these airplanes now? I think I have a flight report on every Hawk ever made well not everyone ever made but every model ever flown those are all available on bydanjohnson.com that's bydanjohnson.com